You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 56 now officially in the history books and with Moro now looking to step onto the battlefield himself, tension now begins to rise as our heroes have the momentary upper hand against Moro's army, but with Moro having to make his way onto the battlefield now, the question is, what exactly can our heroes do in this situation to prevent them from further having their energy taken by Moro, on top of the fact that Moro still has Sagambo by his side, and the fact that with 7-3 Shimura and Yumba seemingly being at a disadvantage, as soon as the opportunity presents itself for them to gain the upper hand on our heroes, the question that everyone is asking is will Goku with the training that he has gained from Maris inside of the hyperbolic time chamber be enough to take down Moro with his newly established powers from having to drain Genki from nearly every planet he's been on thus far, and even if we end up seeing a battle involving Ultra Instant Goku versus Moro, the question is, will Goku have the necessary capabilities in putting Moro down for good, or is Moro going to do to Goku what he did on New Planet Namek and suck the Genki out of Goku in taking his Ultra Instinct powers away from him? As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, and cannot wait for the upcoming Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter, that being Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter number 57, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload, and give this video a big thumbs up if you guys guys are stoked, ready, and excited to see the final battle go down on Earth involving Moro, Sagambo, and the Z Fighters now. With Goku and Vegeta being absent from the battlefield right now, and assuming the fact that Moro is going to fight off the Z Fighters by himself or with Sagambo, one can only imagine that once Goku and or Vegeta, whichever arrive first, end up coming to Earth, then it's going to be an absolute bloodbath once that happens. Now, we saw Maris take Goku inside of the hyperbolic time chamber in the fact that Goku did not know that Maris was in fact an angel that was hiding his identity, and forced Goku into further learning about the ways of Ultra Instinct, that way Goku at some given point in time can tap back into that power and use it to defeat Moro. But during that two month time span, as Goku was training with Maris inside the time chamber, Moro was unquestionably just like Goku and Vegeta, also getting stronger by consuming planets, taking its Genki, and thus growing stronger as they began to progress from planet to planet. Now, do I think think Moro is able to defeat Goku and Vegeta, I do believe that without a strategy and without Goku and Vegeta being cognitively aware of what Moro is about to do, then absolutely, Moro has the greatest chance of taking their powers and abilities again and leaving them in the dust, but do I think that's about to happen? No. And I do believe that in my own opinion, if Goku were to achieve Ultra Instinct Omen or even Master Ultra Instinct to begin with, I don't think that Moro can survive the powers of Ultra Instinct. I don't think anybody can, such as Jiren or Broly or Moro, unless of course Ultra Instinct ends up burning out, just as we've seen be done during the Tournament of Power, only then do I see Goku whipping Moro's ass until that happens, which will then cause a shift in the tides and having Moro have the upper hand, and thus beating Goku down with no other options left. As on the previous Dragon Ball Super discussion, we talked about what it would actually be like to have Moro battle Vegeta as a singular battle, in case you guys want to check up on our thoughts on Moro versus Vegeta, then you guys can go on ahead and find that link located down below. But I think that with Ultra Instinct being a huge factor in this, not only do I believe that this would be the right time in finally seeing Ultra Instinct return again, because we really haven't seen it since the battle against Jiren. We haven't seen it in the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, although it wasn't adapted through the form of a manga, but only through a movie concept. And now we're just about two arcs following the T.O.P. And I think that if there was ever a time to reintroduce the concept, of that power, 
this would be the absolute best time to do so. Now, joining me here today to further discuss the idea of Moro versus Ultra Instant Goku in the Dragon Ball Super manga is my good friend and Dragon Ball YouTuber Emish is live, which by the way, Emish has a brand new Dragon Ball channel that I do encourage you guys to subscribe to. The link to his channel will be located down below. Now, Emish, I think that a lot of people, including myself, I'm not sure about you, ultimately agree in the idea that Ultra Instant Goku would probably have the power to put Moro down. I don't think that Moro is going to have enough power or enough skill to get by what Ultra Instinct is, right? The closest we've seen to that was Jiren, and he ended up losing, and the only other being above Ultra Instinct thus far is Whis, right? We've seen Whis just effortlessly body Goku on so many different occasions as they trained, but my question to you is, do you think that Ultra Instinct Goku is going to have the necessary capabilities or at least the power to hold its own against Moro. Do you think that Ultra Instant Goku could essentially get the job done if he were to actually fight to kill Moro? Or do you think that at some given point Moro is just going to turn the tables on Goku and thus capitalize by finishing him off? Alright, so first and foremost, if we're under the assumption that Ultra Instinct won't last long for Goku, then I don't see him tapping into that right out the gate. There's no way. Um, unless they really just want to end the arc as soon as possible, that's also a possibility, right? So we're also operating under the mindset that anything is possible, right? Especially for a Dragon Ball Super manga. Anything that has Dragon Ball in its name, anything is possible. So there's that. Two, you also have to understand that it's Goku, so he rarely ever takes everything serious, seriously in the beginning, right? He just likes to get things going and kind of assess what's going on. And if he shows up after Vegeta, he's going to obviously assess what's going on. He's going to ask what's going on. He's going to talk to Vegeta. There's going to be some dialogue, so on and so forth. And then... He's going to be like, okay, the real fight starts now, and then only go blue, right? And then maybe go blue how can. And then he actually transforms, the real fight starts now, you know, so it's, it's typical Goku fashion. But, uh, you know, UI Omen, even though it is a substantial increase in power and abilities and everything, the issue with that is that he doesn't really have a go-to move that can finish the job, right? So, which is basically the idea about it being the sign, the sign of Ultra Instinct or the Yeoman, right? He doesn't have that offense 100% yet. He can dodge, he can weave, he can do everything else. He just can't finish. He can't hit Moro or whoever he's fighting against with a, with a finishing move that will put them down indefinitely. That could be where Vegeta comes in, right? Vegeta has the offense for sure. We know we know Vegeta has offense. He's been known for offense. He's generally the first person to, you know, who wants to... And this is one of the few times where he's actually opting not to go in. Right, he's waiting for Moro to make a move specifically, especially Moro. So there is that. He's not really too concerned with Goku because I don't think this chapter ever ever references Vegeta talking about Goku. You know, it actually um, they, it, it's actually the Galactic Patrol and everybody with Krill and everybody asking, well, you know, we don't know where Vegeta is. Goku's just he's kind of lost or whatever, but we don't know where Vegeta is. So they're just kind of concerned there. So there is that to consider. Um, I do think that if Goku were to arrive first, he'd probably stall. He probably knows Vegeta's coming, right? Which would be weird. <laughs> you know, if he knows Vegeta's coming, I mean, he, let's just let's just go this way. Goku kind of has a sixth sense with things, or he kind of has hunches, right? So he knows Vegeta isn't dead. He knows that Vegeta was probably going somewhere else to kind of you know improve himself, and he knows that Vegeta will show up any minute, any minute now. So in Goku fashion, he'll probably stall Moro to some extent before he inevitably gets his energy taken away, and then Vegeta shows up and saves the day. Then they work together, and then Goku kind of like taps into UI Omen one more time, or the first time ever right in front of vegeta and then vegeta's like ha so i see you've kind of you've gotten the hang of that technique and vegeta's like well you know, and then goku's just like well not necessarily but it's our only shot and then goku kind of makes the opening and then vegeta hits him with like some gamma burst flash you know with like souped up spirit control and just you know completely just slaps moro that would be cool right because it's teamwork it's something that we got a lot this this recent chapter chapter 56. so seeing those two kind of utilize some of the most marketable forms that we've gotten for Dragon Ball Super into one specific, you know, uh, lump sum of panels would be great to see, I think. You know, I, I think that would be uh, received pretty damn well by the fans. I would have to agree, but what if Ultra Instinct, as an example, just simply doesn't get the job done? What if Goku ends up burning out, or what if Goku ends up getting tired? What if Goku actually gains the upper hand on Moro and then eviscerates him completely during the opening act of this final battle, but then at some given point in time, just as we've seen be done during the Tournament of Power, Goku just burns out because 
this power that he has, the power that goes even farther beyond that of the gods, just simply is too much for his body to handle, and then he just crumbles under the pressure of Ultra Instinct. What if, in fact, we do end up getting a scenario to where it's Goku versus Moro first, and thus Goku having to lose to Moro, and later having Vegeta step in? Do you think that, from a logical standpoint, that would make sense, or... Do you think that the end battle of this is in fact going to be UI Goku versus Moro, and Goku is just going to do everything he can in his own ability to wipe away Moro completely? Yeah, so if that's the case, if what you're saying is the case, then again, the writing is on the wall, right? That's where Vegeta really comes into play here. You know, he kind of compensates for Goku's lack of being able to master UI. If the goal, because here's the thing, right? So let's just say Goku only knows how to tap into UI right now at will. Right, he's not, he's, it's not mastered. He doesn't really have a, 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 a full grasp on it, but he can do it. You know, he can, for the most part, he can do it. I think he would be under the assumption that, okay, if maybe if I'm just pushed to my absolute edge, to the end of my rope, I'll just, boom, I'll just awaken into MUL like I did versus Jiren. I think that's what he, he's thinking, right? And if we all agree there, and it just fails, the writing's on the wall for Vegeta to just come in and really work with Goku and kind of compensate for everything Goku was unable to do versus Moro, right? So um, now, if here's the thing I mean, if Moro. If Moro saps that power, yeah, it's going to be kind of <laughs> interesting to see how they justify Vegeta coming in and squaring off with Moro, right? Because that's a substantial jump in power, right? That, that's, that's, it's busted. That's, com that's completely insane. It's not, it's not, you know, not believable, right? Because the concept is being able to control yourself and be calm and things like that. These are all the things Vegeta's learning. He's already tapped into some levels of power as far as like, you know, in comparison to UI Omen, you know, the evolution of Vegeta, stuff like that. So there is that, you know, he has gotten a, uh, um, a form or a state of being that ha that has allowed him to gain a substantial power boost. It's just he doesn't have whatever whatever else you need to do those things, right? So if he does have it now, considering that his training with Yajra is complete or more along, you know, the lines of close to it, I 100% I believe he'll compensate for Goku's la uh, shortcomings for sure. And it just makes the, you know, the value of his training and the value of Goku's training feel that much better. Because, I mean, come on, we know Goku when he... Goku fights and he gets stronger. So imagine him training and then fighting, right? So of course his his mindset is that I can't go, I can't, you know, master Ultra Instinct right now. I can't go into the Ultra Instinct, the one form I need. So maybe if I use it and Moro pushes me that far and I have no choice, boom, it'll just trigger. But I don't think that's the case either. You know, they kind of, you kind of have to implement Vegeta's training and his development and, and his role in, into all of this. Well, you don't have to, it's Dragon Ball, but you kind of want to, fans want that to happen. So if you really want this arc to go out with a banger, you kind of have, you kind of need both of them because they're, like I said in, the, in our previous video, where we talked about Vegeta mainly, they are two sides of the same coin. Vegeta has access to things that Goku doesn't now, and Goku has access to things that Vegeta doesn't have now. So they kind of, you know, they complement each other and it kind of, I mean, not kind of, it actually 100%, you know, gets rid of them needing to fuse. Not ever again, but, you know, they don't need to resort to what most people would uh, assume as a cop-out. Because we, I mean, we did get a Burly arc in the anime. We didn't really get it, well, the movie, but we didn't get it in the manga. We just saw, like, a couple panels talking about Burly. But that's about it. We didn't actually see Gogeta in action. And we haven't seen Vegito for quite some time either. So, you're kind of getting that level of power split between two two different fighters who would ultimately fuse up into one being anyway that that both possess that level of power anyway so i think i think it's good i think it's fine um i just don't think that goku will go ui omen out the gate and even if he does you can pretty much gauge the pacing for the chapter or for the closing of this arc because if he goes into the fight with omen right away yeah, it's going to be pretty much the fast end, I would imagine. To me, honestly, I really don't want this to end. I would prefer this chapter to go on for probably maybe nine or eight more chapters before this all comes to a close. It probably will end right around the summertime, if anything. But do you think that Ultra Instinct would be essentially wasted if they had it be introduced in this arc and then for Goku just to fail again? I mean, what would that really mean for Ultra Instinct going forward, knowing the fact that it's a power? that is very 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 useful but Goku just simply can't do anything with it he didn't beat Jiren with it right he didn't throw him out and if he ends up losing tomorrow do you think that essentially the form itself or the power would seem weak in comparison to what someone like Vegeta could do or other people that just have basic abilities and power in comparison to Ultra Instinct because to me 
I think that a lot of people, based on what I've seen in my manga reviews and for my discussions, a lot of people genuinely want to see Vegeta be the one to defeat Moro, and not that there's anything wrong with that, I feel like that would be a really, really great ending, but what would that mean for Ultra Instinct, let's say, for example, if Vegeta ended up taking the victory over Moro? It's, it's hard to actually call it being wasted, you know, only because... He got it again, right? So now it's he kind of has a grasp. I mean, he can he can go into UI Omanet with assumingly, right? So that's fine. That's that's a, that's that's a pretty you know uh, level of progress right there. But if he gets into MUI again and he's whooping Moro's ass and then he just loses it again, like he did in the anime, you know, where he was about to finish Jiren off and then Ugh! you know that dramatic black and white, you know, all this other stuff, you know, then it's it's like oh damn, I knew it. You know, we're we're at the edge of our chairs again reading the chapter and. Whether we agree with it or not, it does give us, we do, we do react to it emotionally. You know, whether we're unhappy or happy with it, the point is we react and we got a reaction and that the chapter got a solid reaction out of us, right? Even if we knew it, even if we called it, the point is that we reacted to it. So that's pretty much what kind of decides whether or not something you're reading or watching is worth the investment or worth your time because it has to get a reaction out of you. If it's not getting a reaction out of you, then it's not a good product. So, um... I don't think there is a way that they could waste it because if he loses it, if he goes into it and then boom, he loses it, it's not a bad thing because you still have Vegeta there anyway, right? And then if he uses it and then kills Moro off or whatever with it, and then it's it's still a good thing in the sense where it's like, whoa, okay, so now he has it and he really used it to finish the job, boom, MUI looks good, right? But he still can't stay in it for long or something like that, I don't know. You know, and then maybe Vegeta has a better understanding now because he kind of, you know, if he was able to figure out that Goku mastered Super Saiyan Blue when they were one being as Vegeta versus Merzu Master, that's what Vegeta figured. He can pretty much, I would assume now, based on his level of training now, that he would be able to assess things a lot better. So, again, it kind of brings these two people together, these two characters that we like a lot. It brings them together, and there's a, um, there's a bigger emphasis on how much they need each other to actually, you know, achieve their goals which is to become the strongest so yeah i am honestly very excited to see what's going to happen i think that a lot of people ever since the beginning of this arc all the way up until now have been wondering about beerus right because i've seen a lot of that in the comment section where's beerus what is beerus doing and beerus is fishing he's fishing on his planet he really doesn't care so if you're expecting to see beerus step in i really really doubt we're ever going to see that at least for this arc because if there was a time for beerus to be involved i think that would be the perfect time for him to step in against such a person like Moro, but we're not going to be getting that. As for Broly, Broly's doing his own thing on Planet Vampa. I don't think that we're going to see anything from Broly in this chapter, so I think that more or less, or at least in this arc, I think that more or less, it's just going to be centered around Vegeta's new power and Goku's Ultra Instinct, and it really comes down to them actually getting the job done because it, this could go either way. This could go in a way to where Goku wins, Vegeta wins, Moro ends up winning, but then something else happens. The last thing I want to see, honestly, is for this chapter to be rushed. So I think that all in all, Ultra Instinct would have the capabilities to defeat Moro, but I don't think that Goku's going to last long in that form because at some given point, I genuinely feel as if Goku's really going to have Moro right where he wants him. And in some way, shape, or form, something's going to happen to really throw Goku off his game. But just in case you guys don't know, Emish is going to be covering lots of Dragon Ball Super content as well as Dokkan and many other things on his channel. So do you have anything to say before we close off this video? All right, so thanks for having me. I um, really do appreciate it. I used to be on this channel a lot. So for those of you guys who do know uh, Emish is live, I used to cover Dragon Ball a lot. Nowadays, I cover mostly Dokkan's so fresh channel. So it's just Emish. You guys can follow me there. A lot of analytical breakdowns, the same way I used to do in the same style, same fashion, the same fashion that I used to cover Dragon Ball super mangas and theories and the anime and stuff like that. I'm bringing that same kind of vibe into Dokkan. So we cover teams, different team builds, what unit is better than the other. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of doing summonings, but I will be, you know, doing some for the year five anniversary that we closing in shortly. So depending on when this video goes up, of course. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, definitely check me out. Um, links will be in the video description as well as the comment section as well. Thank you for the support. And thank you once again, Alex, for having me. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more conversations like this because we used to do this stuff all the time. So 
it does definitely bring back some good memories. Definitely something to check out, guys. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If, of course, you guys are new to the channel and are huge fans of Dragon Ball and cannot wait to see more from the actual Dragon Ball Super manga and from Dragon Ball Super fan mangas, discussions, everything Dragon Ball related, then I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button, turn on all notifications, give this video a big thumbs up if you guys are simply stoked, ready, and excited to see what's going to happen by the end of this entire arc involving Goku, Vegeta, and Moro. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you all so much for watching once again, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Take it easy, guys. Peace. And a quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below. So be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and Gaming, titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, G3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zarbon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Engine gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k -k -k